This is 2023's Wildflower. Warning, spoilers ahead. The movie starts off with B getting ready to go for a morning run, and we quickly cut to Las Vegas where she's taken to the hospital. Joy and Ben rush to get upstairs, and it seems as though Loretta and Peg are already there. Her hospital room becomes a sort of a full house with the family showing up to see how she's doing, but B is still unconscious. The entire family starts arguing over B's body, and she can definitely still hear them even though she's in a coma. That would be a nightmare to be stuck in the bed with eight people screaming over your body and you can't do a damn thing about it. A little prayer should help, right? Well, B wants to figure out what happened to her that put her in the hospital, but she can't seem to remember. So she retraces her steps and goes all the way back to her childhood. After going back 18 years, we find out that Derek and Sharon are B's birth parents, but both of them have mental disabilities. Sharon's father, Earl, doesn't think that Sharon should interact with Derek, but Peg doesn't see the harm. Sharon rushes outside to ask Derek on a date, and he agrees to it. That night, Earl can't seem to sleep much because Sharon isn't back from her date, but Peg doesn't think too much could have happened with them. Well, she was dead wrong. They got married. They might be pretty happy, but the parents are definitely not going to be getting along anytime soon. It turns out that Peg and Loretta never got along, but they have to figure out how to not let Derek and Sharon have a baby. Peg thinks that they should get divorced, but Loretta wants to get Sharon sterilized. And suddenly, Sharon and Derek have B, but her real name is Bambi. Even though their brains weren't fully developed, they still did their best to love and care for B, and the rest of the family warmed up to her fairly quickly. Earl doesn't think that this is going to work, though, and he thinks someone else should be taking care of B. Derek thinks that he should get a job so they can move out, though, and he thinks that they should move to Vegas with his parents. Everyone seems okay with the idea, but Peg really doesn't think that they can take care of B on their own. Cut back to the present, and now a social worker has popped up. Mary seems nice enough, but I don't see too much working out here. Mary wants to know more about B's childhood, and it turns out that Derek and Sharon raised her in a van after they moved out of Peg's house. They ended up living at a trailer park for quite some time, and after B grew up a bit, they managed to get themselves a house. Derek and Sharon were the happiest they ever were in the trailer park, but B loved this house. At this point, B pretty much raised herself, and Derek even started giving her driving lessons at 10. B agreed to take the driving lessons if she got a dog, and she ended up with Godzilla. One morning, Sharon needs help getting dressed for work, but she's not too inclined to go to work. B decides to use cookies as a treat for her like she does Godzilla's biscuits, and she's able to get her ready in no time. After B gets ready for her game, she finds out that Sharon left the door open and the dog is run away. If your dog running away isn't an emergency, then I don't know what is, and B decides to take Derek's truck. Wrecks it, actually. And this is where Mary first shows up as she's there to investigate the crash. In the present, Mary goes to ask Ben and Joy about B's relationship with her parents, and it turns out that B stayed with them for the summer after the accident. They already had twins that were about B's age, but B is definitely confused by their lifestyle as she curses, burps, and comes to breakfast with no pants on. B breaks more rules as she hops in the pool without supervision, and she starts to drown. Ben jumps in to save her, and he has a change of heart as he thinks that he and Joy need to take her in to raise her right. Joy tried to call Sharon to explain how she wanted to take B in, but Sharon called the cops on her. Things took a drastic turn, but B ended up staying with Joy and Ben in the end. Seeing how they were all seen at B's hospital bed later, I imagine Sharon became okay with everything, though. B was enrolled in private school, and she's quite brilliant. In the present, Mary checks in with Derek and Sharon, and she finds out about the car accident that put Derek in his developmental predicament. Derek is sure that B is covered by God through her accident, but when B remembers her past, we find out that she doesn't really think of herself as a child of God. She remembers her friend Nia, and in the present, Nia comes to apologize for getting her in this situation. Mary talks to her about what happened, and she reveals that there was alcohol in B's system when she was brought in. Nia thinks this is impossible, though, as Derek was hit by a drunk driver. Nia does mention a place that they hang out at in Vegas, and she remembers a time that B was trying to sell tickets on the Strip. What private school tells their students to sell play tickets on the Strip in front of a gentleman's club? On top of that, what establishment is hiring a high school girl to clean pools after hours? I mean, really, really after hours. When B finally gets home, she finds Sharon and Derek passed out on the couch, and she starts cleaning up the mess in the house. 
She gets her parents' pills ready for the week, and finally, she's able to lay down for the night. The next day at school, B is approached by Ethan, and after an uncomfortable conversation, Nia can't believe that B isn't picking up on his hints. B has a change of heart after talking to Nia, and they decide to buy beer with Sharon later so that they can go to a party. Their plan works well, and they're able to talk their way into the party with the drinks. This definitely doesn't make them the popular kids at the party. In fact, Gina bullies B so much that she goes to the bathroom to cry. While she's in there, Ethan accidentally comes in and says he's worried that his cancer has returned as he has blood coming out in his pants, and B tells him that she can take him to the hospital. She feels more comfortable taking care of Ethan and taking him to the hospital than she does doing anything else at the party, but her conversation skills with Ethan are absolutely terrible. It turns out that the cancer hasn't come back, and he's just having issues with his prostate. In the present, Ethan shows up to check on B, and he runs into Loretta in the hallway. She can tell that he's keeping a secret, and he tells her that they actually broke up. After he leaves, Mary comes to question Loretta, and she's not too excited to be interrogated. Everything seems to go okay, though, and Mary says she wants to question Ethan next. That seems difficult, but the family is more surprised to find out that she has a boyfriend. In the past, we see that B and Ethan are much closer than anyone could have expected, but things get a little rough when B explains how they come from different worlds since he's from a rich family. One night, Derek and Sharon come home and ask B what's for dinner, but she's busy working on homework. What could make this night more awkward? Ethan showing up to meet the parents with three boxes of pizza? Yep. Naturally, Ethan is on Sharon and Derek's good side already since he brought pizza. It's really that easy. Ethan seems to be pretty okay with B's situation, and he actually likes her parents once they let loose a little bit. He thinks this is a great time to ask B if she wants to go to prom, and she happily agrees. The next day, B goes to work at the pool, and Esther thinks this is a perfect chance to make fun of her. Well, B is ready for her, and she turns the tables on her instead. B is happy with her life for the first time in a long time, and everything seems to be going well for her with school, life, and Ethan. When her guidance counselor asks her about college, though, he wonders why she's only applying to local community colleges since she's so smart and gifted. This is the perfect time for something to go wrong, right? Things can't go too well for too long, can they? B goes out one day to buy a prom dress with Nia, but that evening, little underage hoodlums ask Sharon to buy them alcohol when she comes to the store. Back at the dress store, Nia is unhappy that B changed her mind about going to prom, and in the end, B really says some things to Nia that she shouldn't have. Nia walks out and leaves B to walk home, and on the way, B finds Godzilla and steals him from someone's yard. Meanwhile, Derek shows up at the gas station to get Sharon since the cops were called, but he doesn't go about it the best way, and he ends up getting arrested too. B comes home to show her parents that she found Godzilla, but suddenly she gets a call about them being arrested. B bails them out, and once they get home, she sits them down to talk about their situation. Things go from bad to worse when B asks for her money back, and she finds out that Derek was fired months ago. How do you hide all of these changes? On top of that, Sharon isn't getting a disability check anymore because Derek canceled it, and he slaps B for calling them retarded. This is the lowest moment by far. Suddenly, we're back in the present, and the doctor says that she has had brain trauma in the accident. Naturally, everyone is worried about her ending up like Derek, but the doctor has no idea until she wakes up. Back in the past, B's guidance counselor is really trying to convince her to apply to good schools, but with the recent events at home, B has given up on any of that. B ditches school to play hooky with Ethan, and after getting it on, she reveals that she's not leaving for college anymore. He tries to convince her that her parents will be okay if she decides to leave, and he thinks that it's best for everyone if she moves forward. B doesn't see it that way, though, and she puts a damper on things when she says she could take care of him, too, if he got cancer again. This is what you want to hear after getting laid, for sure. And after this rough breakup scene, we see B going for her run like we did in the beginning. Full circle! In the present, Mary finally gets a chance to sit with Ethan to ask him questions, and he admits that he hasn't been in the room yet because he doesn't think she would want him to see her like that. Back after the breakup, B heads to Nia's house to apologize for her attitude earlier, and she finds out that Nia is going to prom now. As a way to make up for her words earlier, B sticks around to help her get ready for prom, and she heads home to ponder everything that's happened. B drinks in her room while she tries to figure out how to get back on her feet, and she heads to the strip to sell more tickets to get the Disney trip prize. 
Suddenly, Esther's college brother, Andy, shows up and takes her for a ride. Andy really tries to put some moves on her, but she panics after realizing that she doesn't know where they are. This looks like the empty lot from The Hangover. Bad things happen in this lot. During a struggle with Andy, B slips and hits her head on the ground, and she slips into her coma here. Andy and his body rush her to the hospital, where they drop her off on the bench outside. And here we are with B in her coma and her hair being brushed by her mother. Finally, B's eyes open, and the family couldn't be happier to see her wake up. B immediately apologizes to Derek and Sharon, and she couldn't be happier to have each other. Outside, Peg and Joy catch up for a moment, and Joy couldn't be happier for her sister that everything turned out okay. Meanwhile, Ethan shows up with flowers for B, and he sits on her bed with her. He apologizes for how their last conversation went, and he tells her that he definitely doesn't want to break up. The two of them kiss, but they're interrupted by Mary, who came to say her goodbyes. Naturally, things go back to normal, but much better this time around. While B is still trying to recover, everyone that she's helped in the past is coming together to help her instead. What she didn't expect is to hear her dad tell her that he's expecting her to move out. In fact, he's going to turn her room into a man cave. She could have saved a lot of time and energy if she had just asked him this earlier. Derek tells B that he and Sharon will be just fine when she leaves, and she feels a great sense of relief. She goes to turn her college essay into her guidance counselor, and he reassures her that this is the right move. When it comes time for graduation, Peg comforts Loretta as she cries in the school bathroom, and Loretta apologizes for how she acted when Derek and Sharon first got married. The two of them share a moment celebrating B, and they head out to watch B walk. In the end, B finds inspiration in her parents' story, and she's looking forward to the future of her own story. Then, the credits roll. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.